Hey guys, M13 here. <laughs> He's practicing rolling backwards. Because it's fun. Actually, it is kind of fun. Trying to keep your balance while rolling backwards is difficult. You can roll forwards, keep your balance no problem. But try rolling backwards down a hill and keeping your balance. <laughs> you look ridiculous, but hey. Um... Um, <clears throat> yeah, I got a, a story I was just thinking of, a true story, um, very true story, like, there's no, exag I don't need to exaggerate in the slightest for this story, because it's so amazingly unbelievable and 100% true. Um, that's a nice house, man, look at that, it's like two houses together, it's probably like, whew. Well, they, they do that here in Taiwan a lot, you'll get like the whole family will chip together, like you'll get like um, maybe eight people or so, and they'll chip together, and they'll buy a big spot of land, and then they'll buy like, maybe like more than one house on that one piece of land, but and, and they'll all be kind of like beautiful and large, and then they just, uh, and then the whole family just kind of lives together on their own property. Actually, it's kind of like the, the girl with the dragon tattoo, right? That's kind of what they did. They the girl with the dragon tattoo. It was about a family who's wealthy and they all kind of like chipped in together and they bought an island and then they live on, they, the whole island is just one family but they live in like four or five different houses and they're all separated and they have their own. It's, it's a good idea. Um, anyways, totally off topic. I was, uh, okay, the, I've told this story before but it's, it must be probably a long time ago. This is probably, like, my closest close call ever. Like, the, the, it, was, it, was, it was almost like a horrific crash. And, um... Um, what it was, was... I went riding... I went riding on a... On a Sunday... I went riding on a Sunday morning, and I had uh, a meeting in the afternoon at work. It was it was a very important meeting, and I was actually in charge of the meeting. So it was like I had to organize it and put it all together, and it was it was all about me. And uh, and I you know me stupidly, I'm like oh I got you know, one of the most important days of the year, but I don't have to be there until one in the afternoon. Or was it one? No, noon. I had to be there at, like, noon. You know, I still had to, like... And I had to go home and change my clothes and shower and whatever. So I'm like, okay, well, I'll, I'll get up really early. So I got up... I don't remember how early. It was maybe six, seven, whatever. And uh, the plan was to go riding for a bit, be back by, like, ten. You know, shower, change my clothes, and then head to the place for, like, 11.30. And then I'd be there 30 minutes early. So I probably got up really early. I probably got up, like, six in the morning or something and started riding. And, uh, I ran into a couple of guys that I know, and I was on a motorcycle at the time, like a racing bike, and uh, I ran into a couple of other guys that I know, and they're on racing bikes, and, uh, I said to them, uh, and, um, yeah, and I'm like, oh, where are you guys going? They're, oh, we're just going south to some place, and, uh, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, I gotta be back by 10. Uh, you guys gonna be back by then? And they're like, yeah, we'll be back by 10 easily. And I'm like, okay, I'll just go with you guys then. So I joined them, and we're riding, and we're riding, and we're riding, and you know, we start riding at like 6.30ish or something, and then it's like 7.30, 30, 9 o'clock, and I'm like, wait a minute, you know, we've, been, we've already been riding for like two hours, and I said I want to be back by 10, and it's, and it's, and it's 9 o'clock. So we've been riding for two hours, and I want to be back by 10, and it's nine o'clock now. Shouldn't it take two hours to get back? We're heading two hours out. So I say, you know, I say to them again. I write a red light or something, and I'm like, "Hey guys, I need to be back by ten. Are you sure?" And they're like, "Yeah, we'll be back by ten. Don't worry about it." And I'm like, "Okay, well maybe they understand. You know, maybe uh, there's a shortcut. Maybe we're taking the long way somewhere, and then we're gonna shoot back in on a different road, and we'll be back in no time." So I continue on along for a little bit, and then it's like, I don't know, like nine thirty. And I'm like, hey, this doesn't make sense. We've been heading south for two and a half hours, and they're telling me they can make it back to my city in a half an hour. So for a third time, I say to them, <laughs> I say to them, 
I need, I really need to be back by 10. How, how is it possible? We've been going south for so long. And then he replies with, oh, 10? I thought you said four. Because in Chinese, 10 and 4 sound very similar. They sound about as similar as 15 and 50. Like, as much as those two numbers sound similar, that's what 4 and 10 sound like in Chinese. Well, especially with the Chinese, Chinese people's um, lazy pronunciation. There's, there's, like, I pronounce 4 and 10 much better than they do. I should just show you what they are. 4 is like 四, and 10 is 十. So it's just like si and shi. There's a little bit of an R on the 10, but they're both kind of S sounds. But it's very, very, very common for, for Taiwanese folk, I don't know about China, China, but for Taiwanese folk to get lazy with the two and they pronounce the two exactly the same. They'll be like, they'll be like, you know, when they're trying to say four, they'll say shi. And then I'm like, si or shi? And they'll be like, shi. And I'll be like, are you saying 4 or 10? And they'll, be, they'll hold up their hand and they'll be like, shi, shi. And I'm like, well, you're saying 10, buddy, but you're only on four fingers. Um, and that's not me misunderstanding. That's, they, they really are. You can ask a Taiwanese person. They'll admit it. Like, it's very common. Anyway, so, so here I am. I, well, super important day. It starts at like, my, my day starts at like 12 or 1. I forget what, day it st- what time it started at, but I wanted to be back by 10 to give myself ample time to like rest and change my clothes. So I still had a bit of extra time to make it back by, but not much. So I'm like, okay, well, I got to get head back. So I make a U-turn, and I'm, I'm not, at the time I wasn't, and I'm, um, I forgot to mention one thing. On the way out, when we were heading south, this was shortly after the huge earthquake that Taiwan had back in like 1990. I don't know, 1999 or 98. There was a huge earthquake that shook Taiwan. And uh, it was shortly after that. And on this road, there was a huge crack in the road all the way across. And one side of the crack was like a half a foot higher than the other side. It was, it was pretty much like a curb in the middle of the, going across the middle of the road. And on the way heading south, uh, I went down the curb. So that meant when I was heading back north, like I'm doing right now, I was going to hit the curb. And I made a mental note when I went over the curb. I'm like, that's fucked up. Like, there's a, it's like a three-inch straight up and down wall on the middle of a road. It was like, you know, it was just, it, it, it wasn't a gradual bump. It was a crack. And then part of the road was higher than the other part. So it was just a sheer wall. It's only a two-inch, two, three-inch wall, but still. Um, you know, so going south, I kind of like felt the bike drop like a half of, you know, a few inches. Just drop. And then, so I made, a, I, I kind of made a, a mental note of the area, and I'm like, okay, on the way back north, I need, need to pay attention, because I don't want to hit that thing at a high rate of speed or whatever, I got to pay attention. So I forgot about that, and I'm flying back, and I'm doing insane speeds. I'm doing, like, the speed limit here is 60. I was probably doing 160. No, I was probably doing higher than that. I was probably doing about 170, 180. And I'm flying back up this road, and, uh, <laughs> and I kind of, like, last possible second I realized oh that bump's coming up and I kind of I kind of recognized because I was I made a mental note of some of the signs and stuff and I'm like oh that bump's coming up and then I see it and I'm all, I'm still doing like 180 and the bump there's this crack across the road so I did the worst possible thing and that is I I don't I don't know if I braked or if I just let off the gas but I did one or the other I and and but that's something you're not supposed to do that when you're going to hit something you're actually supposed to accelerate because it, it lightens up the front tire and gives you a better chance of going over it instead of instead of uh, kind of just crashing into it. Uh, and the same would apply in this situation. But I, I you know, because I was already doing like 170, 180, and it's like, you know, how do I accelerate when I'm already maxed out? So I uh, I let, but instead, you know, and I let off the gas or I braked, and um, and. Uh, and when I hit the curb, because I was braking, when I hit the curb, my front tire just really bit into it and jammed into it. And my rear tire, my rear tire went up off the ground. So I was doing a, like a, a wheelie, except on my front tire. I think it's called an endo. Uh, so, but I'm, and I, you know, I, I, I obviously, sh- I shaved off some speed, but maybe not much. Like I was maybe doing between 120 and 150 kilometers an hour on the front tire and not just a little bit but like I was like 
maybe 10 o'clocking it, 11 o'clock. And, uh, and that when I, when I smashed into it, it launched me forward and my butt left the seat. I think my groin would have been like up on the, you know, up on the speedo. I was holding, my head was down near my headlight. Like the bike was like this. My head was almost rubbing against the front tire. The only reason I was still on the bike was because I was hooked on with my thumbs. I had my two thumbs and my whole body is like up, like my butt's up here and my head's down in front of the front tire. This is a scooter, but the comparison is still valid. And I was just holding on by my thumbs. And what I did was I just kind of slowly slid back. I was using my thumbs. I didn't break at all, which we, <laughs> if it's up like this and I break the front tire, I just would have flipped. So all I did was I just used my thumbs and I just kind of slid back and kept pushing myself until I got my butt on the seat. And then once I put my butt in the seat, I leaned back with my body and the bike dropped back down onto the rear tire. And then I, and then I rode for a little bit and then I pulled over and then I kind of just shook for a little bit from the adrenaline shock. It was like nuts. And then, uh, yeah, and then I continued on with the ride. I made it, I didn't have time to like, I made it back home and I just like changed clothes quickly and then I shot over to the place. And then I had a, a good story to tell for the beginning of the meeting. And that was my, I was probably, with, well, with regards to riding a motorcycle, it was probably my closest close call ever. I've had closer close calls than that with, with other vehicles, but. My closest close call, and this is 100% true, not exaggerating, not lying. My closest close call was, I was, I was, I felt, did I fall down? No, I didn't fall down, I turned. I turned in front of a bus, I stopped in front of a bus that was doing 60 kilometers an hour and it was maybe five feet away from me. So if you get the mental picture in your head, I'm, at a, I'm, I'm directly in front of a bus doing 60 kilometers an hour straight at me and I'm stopped and I was on a bicycle and I couldn't get out of the way because I was sitting on a bicycle. I couldn't jump or run because the bicycle was at a complete stop and I was directly in front of a bus doing 60 kilometers an hour. That was my closest call ever. <laughs> closest close call ever. You ever heard of M Mordeth 13? M13? No? Okay, I suck. <laughs>